Today, I want to introduce you to a few new features within SciSpace that will help you to be able to read and interact with a research article or review article much faster. I want to thank SciSpace for sponsoring this video to allow me to show you these new features and supporting the channel. So this is SciSpace's homepage and SciSpace has a lot of different tools that are available. And you can see several of the tools over here, including a literature review, an AI writer, paraphraser, and chat with PDF. And chat with PDF is what we're gonna sp be specifically using today. So if I click on chat with PDF, I can either upload a PDF or I can choose a previously uploaded PDF. Today I'm going to work with a previously uploaded review to show you some of the features that SciSpace offers. So I can click on that review and this is going to bring me to the chat with PDF. And this actually has so many more features than just chatting with the PDF that I want to walk you through now. So first you have the PDF file. This will allow you to read the file just directly. Then you also have the ability to directly summarize the file. So this shows you the highlights, the major themes, the categorization of types of exercise, and it's going to go through the different sections within this PDF file. So this is a review on molecular adaptations to acute exercise. And so we can see that there are going to be different themes within this. We can see major themes and structure of this review. And so what the summary is doing is actually following the structure of the PDF file and then giving you a summary of each one. And so you can see that there are bullet points here to summarize the different components of this review. So if you wanted to really quickly understand what are the different things that are included within this review, you can easily access them through the summary and it's just a one click to get back to your PDF file. Now, a new feature that was just added in is the new podcast feature. And this podcast feature actually takes this article and turns it into what you would kind of listen to as a podcast. So it's two people talking back and forth and it's a really easy, fun way to get to understand what's included in this article. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a little bit of it for you so that you can hear what it has to say. So I can click play um, the podcast. Welcome folks. Today we're discussing molecular responses to acute exercise and their implications for skeletal muscle adaptation to exercise training. This is a fascinating area. So what exactly happens at the molecular level when we exercise? And how does that lead to the changes we see with consistent training? Scratch pad. Well, exercise acts as a stressor, disrupting homeostasis within the muscle. This disruption triggers a cascade of neuronal, mechanical, metabolic, and hormonal responses. Think of it like this. When you lift weights, the mechanical stress on your muscles, coupled with the metabolic demands of the activity, triggers signals within the muscle cells. These signals activate various pathways, ultimately leading to changes in gene expression and protein synthesis, which over time result in muscle growth. So you can see that it's basically two people talking back and forth. One kind of introduces and explains what's happening in the paper and the other one's kind of asking questions to get to know the paper a little bit better. And it really brings the level of knowledge kind of down so that you can understand it even if you're not really familiar with this field. So this would be a great way to quickly understand the overall highlights of a paper without having to read the entire paper and with just being able to listen to it. If you're on the pro plan, you can also download these podcasts, but if you're on the free plan, you can still listen to the podcast, but you won't be able to download them. The next thing you can do in this screen is be able to actually explain any of the things while reading. So if you get the summary, you understand what it's kind of about, then you can listen to the podcast and get a little bit deeper dive, a fun, easy way to learn about what this paper is about. And now we can dive in and start reading. And as we're reading, it's not surprising that you're going to come across things that you don't really understand either the actual information in it or the way that it, the author is trying to say something. So if I am reading I can come into my abstract. Let's say this sentence right here. These pathways include the transduction of signals arising from neuronal, mechanical, metabolic, and hormonal stimuli through complex signal transduction networks. So let's say I'm not quite sure what this means. So I can highlight it and then I can click explain text. And this is going to send this into the chatbot area and it's gonna go ahead and start working to write a response that helps explain that text. 
So what it does is it breaks down this statement into the different parts that are included in it. So whenever we write scientific literature, we tend to include three or four ideas in one sentence and it can kind of make it confusing. And so it says in this section, we break down the complex ideas about how our body reacts to various signals. So it says, what are pathways? And it explains what pathways are. Types of signals. So it easily explains the four different types of signals. So now I don't need to go and look up what all these different types of signals are. It explains what signals signal transduction networks are. So this is a fancy term for how signals are passed along in the body. This allows us as someone who is just getting started in this field to actually be able to understand it in kind of plain English. Then it explains what effector proteins are, the pre and post transcriptional processes, and protein translation and degradation. So those are all the different components of this sentence. And then at the very bottom, it brings all of this back together to re-explain what it is trying to say. So another thing we can do within SciSpace is explain a table. And so if I click up here and it says explain math and table, I'm going to click there and then I'm going to go ahead and click over the table that I want it to explain. And it's going to send that table that I've now clicked on to the chatbot and the chatbot's now going to be able to explain it back to me. And so we can see it shares an overview of the table and then it shares the different types of sensor protein and receptors. That's what's in this first column here. And we can see it gives us information about each set. So this would be really nice if this is hard to copy and paste out. We can then take it from here, copy and paste it to be able to easily work with that information within a notebook or something like that if this is difficult to copy and paste out of the table. The final thing that we can do with this is actually just ask direct questions about this PDF. One of the things that I tend to like to kind of store with anything that I'm working on is actually being able to ask like what are the limitations or future directions of this work and so I can go ahead and ask that question and so we see limitations and future directions, methodological issues, temporal resolution, noise and data, future directions includes repeatability of responses, specificity of adaptations, inclusion of control conditions, and fiber type specific analysis. So these are all different things that we could pursue as additional research questions in the future. It quickly gives us a few different questions that we might want to ask. Then it also shares the specific sources and we can actually click the locate in PDF and it will take us to that section. So it takes us to the future directions section for us to be able to understand where that source came from. So you can also see that all of these are up here within the section. Now, when we're chatting with the co-pilot, we can make some changes. So it does have a setting and it can have response length. So if you want quick, rapid response, you can change it to concise. If you want a medium length, you can change it to medium and then you have it detailed and you can see the detail that it gives in these responses. You can have the tone. So a simple is going to break it down kind of into plain English. Academic is probably going to include that academic language and then professional won't be as much academic jargon, but still in a professional tone. Your experience, so if you want it to be more advanced, you can put it to expert, or you can have it at beginner if you want it to explain in plain English. And then you can see that it's always giving me these bullet points as responses. We can change this for it to give paragraphs instead if you're interested in that. You can also copy this response if you want to copy the entire text and paste it into a different thing like Notion, a Zotero note, or even a document that you're working on, you can do that. You can thumbs up or thumbs down the response to give feedback back to SciSpace. And then you can also save to a notebook. So if we click save to a notebook, this will create a new notebook and directly save this within there. You can see that this untitled notebook appears here. Now the entire note is now saved within this notebook and I can work within here to write more about it, give it a title, anything like that to then be able to work with this note as well. And if you're ever looking for your notebooks, you can go to my library and click notebooks and then it will show you the notebook here. This is the notebook specific to the one I just created. If you are working on reading a research article or a review article, I would really recommend going ahead and signing up for a free account on SciSpace and uploading your PDF. I will leave a link in the description below and then working with it using all the free features that I've actually shown you here today. If after working with it, you really like it and you're interested in upgrading to a paid plan, I will also have discount codes in the the description below for you to get started with SciSpace. I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.